Well, by the time it comes out, Dan Cole might have retired, lads, but he's back in the squad. Why have you been horrible? He's been ageist. He is. He is. I mean, you're talking about the squad. Then you want us to comment on Dan Cole's inclusion at however old he is. Um, you're talking about tight air props, right? And England have struggled at scrum time. And ironically, the two props that are considered number one and number three the best picks for England, both playing at Bristol, who are bottom of the league and not going over in the scrum either. So Coley can scrummage to the cow shins and back, can't he? He's added to his game. He's been in sparkling form for a tight head uh, for Leicester over the last 18 months. And Steve Borthwick's the coach again, um, who isn't ageist. He isn't going in there with necessarily any preconceived ideas about how bad players are. And obviously, you know, Dan Cole got pushed aside since the World Cup in 2019 when South Korea are scrummed to bits. But... Stuff great, I scrummed to bits in November as well with Genge and Sinclair. So, I, I mean, he's picked what he considers the best three tight heads uh, in Carl Sinclair, Dan Cole and Joe Hayes. Um, and it's not a position where you can actually list off five or six other options, is it? Across England, it's a bloody tough position to play in. And, you know, these are the best three they're looking at. So, Coley, doesn't matter how old he is. Um, Steve Borthwick, his mantra, he's come in. He listened to his press conferences. He he puts a straight bat around any World Cup chat. In 19 days, we're playing Scotland, so that's all we're focused on, getting better. And the, we're so excited to run out and make the fans proud at Twickenham. So uh, he's just short-termism, which is right and great. First things first, let's try and win the Calcutta Cup back because Scotland have, have won that too many times over the past five years. And then you go on to Italy and it will be the same again. With other picks as well, you're talking of props. I can't believe Valve Rapava Ruskin yeah. isn't in. I cannot believe it. And look, Steve Borthwick, there's no better man to be picking a team, I don't think, in terms of how much depth, due diligence, stats, numbers, everything you hear. Like, he leaves no slipper unturned. But, I mean, Bevan Rod, I'm not saying he's not as good as Val Pava Ruskin because I haven't seen enough of Bevan Rod. But from what I've seen from Val Rapava Ruskin, Bevan Rod... Must be one of the best losers in the world because Rapava Ruskin is carving up. He's dominating every so I don't every know whether, stat, isn't he? I, I don't know whether every, every, every facet of the game, though, but it isn't just stats. I commentated on the game at the weekend. I watched the Saracens game the week before when he's up against a top class, international class pack. He's carving up the scrum. His work rate's through the roof. He's turning over ball. And at the weekend against Leinster, he's carrying dominantly as well. And I'm thinking, well, he is an absolute shoo-in. You know, I don't want to say that Steve Borthwick doesn't like Gloucester, but going based on the squad, I'm thinking he doesn't like Gloucester <laughs> because he, like, he's the one-one. He's he's the one, the one-one. He's the one-one, the one-one with the one on his back. He's the one player that I'm looking at and be like, mate, he, you've missed a trick there. He's 30 years old. He's one of them players that you need to keep on side. I think in terms of motivation, positivity. He ain't playing better. He ain't he ain't played better. He ain't gonna play better. This is as good as he gets. Now's the time to pick him ahead of a World Cup. Not even in the squad. Madness. IMO. Who are the other notable omissions for you guys? Ollie Lawrence. Yeah, that's the big one for me. Um, he's been ridiculously good for Bath. And you talk about I I read it last week when Nick Evans did an interview. Now, I don't know where to say this because I interviewed Nick Evans pre match before a game. I'm going to say it. Nick Evans said on the interview, the Q&A, and he might have been joking, he might have had a few beers, so we'll give him that bit of slack. Um, he said the Owen Farrell at 12 and Marcus Smith at 10 just doesn't work. And then he, he's been named as England coach last week. He says, I think it can work. I think it can work. <laughs> no, <laughs> he, did. he didn't. No, he did uh, He not. did. So, I, I mean, the Ollie Lawrence one for me, does it mean that they're looking at Farrell still as a 12? Well, we've had this debate on here endlessly now for the last few weeks during November as well. And Owen Farrell, whether you like him or not, is the best 10 on form currently in Europe, if not the world. Um, and I'm just talking recent form, obviously New Zealand aren't playing and all that stuff. And South Africa aren't playing internationally, but their players are playing in various guises and Australians aren't playing. But Owen Farrell's form at 10 is ridiculous. Now, Marcus Smith did exceptionally well on Sunday uh, against Racing, some sparkling moments, but... You need Faz at 10 for England, I think, uh, and, and Smith on the bench, which means you need to look at the centres. Um, and the fact that they've picked Finn Smith as well in the squad means that 
makes me think even more that actually Farrell could be looked at seriously as a 12, which means Ollie Lawrence isn't in the squad. So uh, Ollie Lawrence, the big one for me about how exciting he's been, how he's played, the centre conundrum that we keep finding ourselves in. Well, um, disappointed he's not in. Obviously, there's Manu, there's Henry Slade, um, but you know, from a centre perspective, good to see Joe Marchant back in there as well. Poor Joe Marchant, right? He was told by Eddie Jones he's he's not good enough for England, so he signs a contract with Stade Francais to start post World Cup. Quinn's obviously said there wasn't enough room in the salary cap for him as well, so he's ended his international career post World Cup by going to play in France, and now Steve Borthwick's picked him in his first squad. So I wonder if he's trying to get out of that contract so he can play for England again. Unless they change it. Unless they change it, of course, yeah. Um, Which I think they might. So we'll see. But yeah, I mean, uh, Ollie Lawrence is a big one for me. The big talking point, Billy Vanapola as well. He's not in it. Um, mm. Other names, Johnny May's not in it as well. Uh, you know, a seasoned international, he's not playing that well. And, and what I like about the squad, realistically, is, and Steve Borthwick made a point about saying it, he said, I picked on form. And I picked on players that are playing very well in the Premiership, which is the opposite to what Eddie Jones used to say. Oh, mate, Premiership doesn't matter, mate. Premiership form's not the same as international, mate. So I like that from Borthwick. Um, Jack Noel, another one. Some big names missing, but you know you can only sort of respect Steve Borthwick for you know picking some players on form. Caden Murley being one that we banged on about. Ollie Hassel Collins being another. Um, I believe Vernapol is a big one, though, isn't he, Jim? He is a big one, yeah. And I interviewed him last week on the Big Gym Show, if anyone wants to listen to that. That's out next week. But it was interesting because he spoke about how he's spoken to Steve and what Steve wants of him in terms of stats. So he was hitting Billy with stats. And when you look at numbers of players, it's like, all right, you can read too much into stats, but he's clearly big on output. And he's looking for breaks and he's looking for busts off Billy. And if you look at Billy play recently, he's not had it. He's getting double, triple team by players. So, you know, that's up to him now to go and find that kind of form that Steve wants him to try and find or become that player that Steve wants him to be. They've got history in a good way. They played together when Steve was at Saracens. So he'll know Billy inside out. Uh, but again, Steve's a smart coach, right? He knows what he wants. He knows how to play the game. He knows how to coach the game. He knows what's going to fit for England in that game plan. And Billy is a big loss. I do, th- I do think that. I think that he's an international standard player, even if he's at 80%. But you look at the players that he's picked ahead of him or ball carriers, you look at Jack Willis, injury-free now, playing over in Toulouse, playing well by all accounts and from the snippets that I've seen. Benno carving up, different type of carrier. Sam Simmons... This is his last chance to lose because he's off to Montpellier. <laughs> I think they'll change it. I do think they'll change it. And because Tom Curry's injured, they brought his brother in, Ben, just because he looks like him. I'm joking. <laughs> ben Curry's a quality player yeah. as well. But it is there is a shift, isn't there? And I think I've spoke about it maybe last week, the week before, in terms of the carrying ability of players now. It's not gone of the days of your big carriers that can get through the yards, which is so important. It's the explosive power, the wider channels that kind of manipulation with footwork, uh, busting through tackles. Meters after contact as well is a big one. Exactly. Meters after contact, like you said, which is the hardest one to get now. Because if you're in traffic, like Billy Vanderpolder always is, he's getting gang tackled. Like we saw at the weekend against Leon, he's got four players on him every time he got the ball. Maybe an over-exaggeration. Two, three, four players on him. And I think the same's happening with someone like Manu as well. Like Manu's not playing as well as he has done in years gone by for a number of reasons. You know, he's he's getting on a little bit, the injuries that he's had, but he's also getting gang tackled by players. They know how big he is and how powerful he is. But wouldn't you place value on people getting gang tackled though? Because it frees up space? Yeah, it does. Yeah. But again, uh, Steve will have access to what he wants to have in a player and what he looks at in terms of a carry number eight. Don Brandt's slightly wider. You look at Don Brandt's carries, they come wider out. They come from out to in. He's busting the line. He's offloading. Whereas Billy's like an old school bull, isn't he? And I say that in the in the kind of kindness of sense. I love Billy. I'd, I'd have him in my team. But for Billy now, he's had a couple of setbacks with injuries, had a couple of setbacks of not being in the squad, then being brought back in. So it's up to him how he responds. But we've always said that the English back row, what a treat to be able to choose. Billy Van Apola misses out. Like, there's a load of others that we can go through that could be there or thereabouts. Lewis Ludlow for 
Gloucester for me, I think he's a, a an awesome player, like an absolute nose. He's got power, he's got speed, he's a line out option, he's a leader. Like he's not in. You could easily have him. You know, if we look at other teams as well, Dave Ribbons in a different position. Plays with Gloucester though, mate. You said Steve Borthwick doesn't like Gloucester. <laughs> no, but did I say that? I said he he mustn't because he's not putting Johnny May or Ruin Ackerman was close from what I heard, but he's not putting Valver Parva Ruskin in form loose in Europe at the minute. But yeah, like Billy is the headline one, but you look at the quality that they've got. Ben Earl, he's the yeah. one for me. I don't know whether Tom Curry being injured and whether or not Tom Curry makes that first game against Scotland. I don't know what the news is no, on his hamstring, done. but Ben Earl, well, Ben Earl, mate, this is it, mate. This is his time to shine. He is banging form. I hate going on about players that aren't in because I'm actually quite excited about the squad. Um, one question for you, though, Jim, that I'm surprised about in terms of a non-selection uh, is Dave Ribbons, who you talk then about ball carrying and explosivity, ball playing as well. Is he not the all-round second row that can do the lot? Because he's not been picked. We saw that offload against Africa. I've watched him at length for... And I've always been impressed by him when he's playing for Saints. He's a big lad. As a second row, he can carry... He's got footwork. He looks for holes as well as the grunt stuff. How's he not in? I don't know. The one position for me is second row, where they're thin. You look across the globe, really... Everywhere now, big second rows are few and far between. They just are. They just don't make us like they used to. They're just not coming through. But <laughs> he's gone for Mauro Toji in the second row. He's got Nick Azikwe who can play in that position. He's got Courtney Laws. Um, he's got Johnny Hill, Johnny Hill, who is an out-and-out out second row, and um, Ollie Chesham as well. So you've got that kind of hybrid position. So again, you're probably thinking about how he wants to play. But it'll be Johnny Hill and Mauro, right? But out with that... I think he sees Courtney as a second row. I'm not answering your question. I don't really know why, but I, Dave Ribbon's a good player, but maybe in that position he's going, he's going for he's going for he's going for proving. Johnny Hill's been awesome for sale. He's been Johnny Hill's been much better than he at sale than he has been at Exeter in recent years. Yeah, but I'd, I'd have him Ribbons ahead of Azikwe. I think. Yeah, and Nick Azikwe was an interesting one. Massive fan of Nick. Coached him at mm. Saracens. I won't reveal his injury woes, but. He's had a really nasty injury. But again, you know, Steve knows yeah, he what does. he's doing. And he, they're just very similar. That's all to Ollie yeah. Chesham. Nick is it weighing him. Pod, 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 pod. Rugby pod.